sure. Oh, uh, I hope it didn't screw all this up. Okay, yeah, it should, should be okay. Hello, everybody. It is Alchemy Master McGavin. And today I would like to start on a, another crafting video for shaping. <coughs> um, I have finally learned how to do an actual visual experience. So those of you who <laughs> uh, had a hard time trying to figure out that I was doing audio, uh, here you go. You're good. Just don't skin me alive, please. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to go over the basics of shaping overall, um, some of the general steps and processes and where and how to get certain things. Uh, and then eventually I will go back and redo my uh, engineering, mining, and all the... Uh, other crafting bits for like alchemy and such. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll go through and I do an actual video of that. I'll still keep the, up the audio files in case anybody prefers that over anything else. But so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, moving up with shaping tools you're going to need are of course your book to be able to study from you're going to need a wood saw a rasp draw knife carving knife wood finish wood shaper clamps depending on uh, <coughs> what you're putting together you'll need glue wood stain, sandpaper if you plan to repair your tools, scissors, and of course you'll need lumber. And depending on what you make and you'll need to actually assemble together, you're going to want bowstring and things of that nature. So where you get these tools uh, is inside your engineering society or you can have players make you better versions of them uh, through normal metals you can gather, rare metals you can find in the mines, or even fest metals. If you really just want to get started, buy it straight out of the society at the crafting supply spot, which I'm at now, and then work your way up. Uh, the tools, as I said before, do tend to cost quite a bit in platinum, especially with the large array of tools that uh, engineering in general do require you to have. There are several that can't be made, but you can get different variations of looks from either societies, shops, or uh, fests that are being held. So once you gather all your tool, or gather the money, you can come down to the engineering society for your, like your crafting supplies and this will show each of their costs and what you'll need. This is just for the actual tools and uh, wood that you're going to want. Then over to the west is where you have your bookstore. Of course your starting book is going to be a journeyman book. Or no, sorry, whoops. <laughs> it's going to be an apprentice book then it's going to be a journeyman once you get further along and then eventually a master. You could hop straight to the master book, that way you don't have to get anything later on, but uh, it, it is pretty expensive. It does cost uh, 62 platinum, 5 silver. So if you're just starting out, go ahead and get your uh, apprentice book and go from there. The difference is it won't have as many of the, uh, <coughs> of the plans to make certain things. So if you go and do a work order and it claims that you need a certain type of bow or table or whatever and it's not in your book, 
it means that you're ready to travel up to the next level in the actual uh, crafting book itself. Once you have your book and your tools, you're going to need supplies in order to start making uh, your uh, wooden furniture or bows. Shaping is all about uh, wood, as were the uh, carving was all about stone and bone. Shaping is mostly gone after for the use of bows. Uh, you can make some pretty nice furniture with it based on what you want to make it out of, but usually people, just like with blacksmithing, try to go for the money side of it, and they'll make they'll make some pretty good bows overall. Especially when you get uh, <clears throat> up there with enough of the craft and learn to do pretty well. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm injured. Fine, I'll heal myself real quick then. Uh, so, once I'm done applying remedies on myself, uh, we will go and gather some supplies. In my previous video on lumberjacking, I did say that you can go and gather your own wood, or you can actually buy it in the actual uh, engineering society itself if you just want to do training. If you actually want to make something for yourself that actually has use and does very well, then uh, you're going to want to go out and gather your own supplies, or if you don't have the skill necessary to go out and gather it, you can pay somebody else to go out and get it for you. There's actually a lot of wood material out there. But if you wanted to go out and buy the wood from the depot, you'll come to the Engineering Society Depot into the building to the east, and you'll be met with this uh, chart, and you can buy all of your needed items from the, the rock and bone and lumber. I should have some lumber in my back. Yeah, in my backpack. Okay. So, let's go ahead and go to the Ranger uh, Society, since I know I can gather uh, sticks there. Now, you can do this with uh, logs, branches, sticks, and everything of that nature. So keep in mind that the verbiage for what you'll be messing with will change. But if you do have, oops, if you do have uh, the material from lumberjacking to go with, this is how you'll go about turning it into lumber, so you can actually use it. So starting off with, <coughs> if it's in a deed. You're going to want to be in a society to tap the deed for them to bring you the material you have set up into it. <clears throat> if you have it on hand, go ahead and just pull it out of your bag or duffel or whatever. And then you're going to want to grab your uh, wood saw. So, and make sure it's a wood saw, not a bone saw. I made a really annoying mistake when I first started doing engineering myself I tried to use a wood saw on bone and actually quit for a couple years because I got too frustrated in trying to deal with it and didn't think there was much of a difference there is so please keep that in mind so what you're gonna want to do is with the wood saw in hand as well as the item log stick branch in the other hand you're gonna want to put cuts my in this case, my, I have a stick, so stick with my saw. And you're going to do this a couple times. Eventually, you'll get to the point to where you don't have to use the wood saw anymore, and you're going to move on to your uh, draw knife. And this does train uh, engineering and such so you're going to want to uh, uh, you can use this to train to start off with if you really want to but if you're just going to use the train engineering then I would suggest just doing your uh, uh, bone carving it's a, it's a lot easier, less tools, less hassle 
So right here I tried to cut the stick with my saw. It said it's ready to be carved with the draw knife. So let's go ahead and move that over, untie my draw, and then we're going to scrape my stick with my draw. And then we're going to be doing this a couple of times as well. Oh, whoops, I didn't see that Virath wanted the heal. <laughs> Sorry. So once again, you're going to keep scraping the stick with your draw knife until you can no longer scrape it. there we go it'll say you cannot figure out how to do that so now we actually have lumber now <clears throat> if you just gathered around the ranger area like I did it is very poor quality now although tools uh, tool conditions and your uh, ranks in engineering all play a part into the quality of what comes out. If you have a very poor quality item when you start off with, there's only so much an expert craftsman can do to bring it up. So try to find good quality material and then as you work with it, it should become either a little bit better or not drop as far. So when you have the finished product, you should still be able to either sell it to people or turn it in for work orders. So I have all the tools on hand, so let's go to another room. Okay. So, now once you have all your material... Oh, uh, sorry. If you have a log, you're going to get more lumber out of it than you will a stick. Each, each thing has different volumes, like with the stones, pebbles, boulders, uh so you'll get different volumes in return. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what each one is, but uh, it's never bad to have some extra stock in hand. So, getting lumber from... Oh, what's the first book. So the... Damn it. So... To start off, after you get all your lumber, grab yourself your book, your shaping book. Be sure to turn it to the correct page. So right now I'm going to be making a competition longbow. Then, uh, how much coin do I have? I got plenty. Uh, study your book. And then this is where you'll see if it's in an area which you can craft properly. If you get like uh, what I got here, instructions to glance absorb a handful of finer points. I'm not really in the best spot to be making this uh, sort of tool, but it still does pretty good for training and will serve well for the purpose of the video. You want to try to stick with you understand all facets of the design or everything but minor details if able. Anything below that you're starting to risk quality. The harder a task is for what you know experience wise the more damage it'll actually do to the overall quality. This goes especially if you want to sell it to somebody else and eventually when you get high enough in work orders so you'll start demanding certain levels of quality so the better material, the better tools, and the better at which you understand the book, the more you'll be able to have a consistent high enough quality to turn in and or sell with. So stowing away the book, get my lumber, and I want to get my draw knife. Uh, untie draw. And then to start off with, with the lumber in one hand and the draw knife in the other, you're going to scrape my lumber with my draw knife. Now as you see here, 
it says the excess material I had it it only needed eight pieces for the overall craft of this bow so any extra fell to my feet so don't forget when you go to leave the area to pick it up out of your feet or you won't be able to leave the room and then I'm going to continue oh nope okay so I scraped it and it says that I need to use a carving knife so tie draw to my belt untie my carving knife now with the carving knife we are going to want to carve my longbow with my knife now every single step you do may segue into another odd one you're not going to always just fall back to the original tools like in this case with the draw knife after I finished with the carving knife it's now asking for me to be using a wood shaper so I'm going to tie knife to my belt and oops don't see if I can type and then untie my shaper now with the shaper in hand we are going to want to shape my longbow with with my shaper and once again we're back to a carving knife once the round time's done so we will tie again the shaper to my belt and tie carving knife and then carve my long with my knife the uh, the more experience you have in dealing with the material and the easier the workability is of the material you're messing with the less you'll need to be bouncing around with tools unfortunately I'm working with a very hard task uh, so I'm making some general mistakes here and there causing me to need other tools to fix them uh, shape oops, my long with my shape Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to tell you uh, what is the best wood or what is the best material to be working with for specific items or which bow is with the best wood. You'll have to talk to an actual uh, proper shaping craftsman about that. Um, but uh, I know certain woods are good for long bows, other ones are good for short bows. Some allow for better balance versus power. So I would ask people about what are the better materials for. Um, I don't always go for the best materials personally. I have a lot of stuff on me that I like the way it sounds, like the cherry ash wood. I used to have a, uh, a short bow of that just because it sounded really cool. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. So we just got done carving with the knife and it's asking for us to continue carving with the knife. we will keep going with a shaper there are some things you can't ignore uh, just like with any other craft but it will heavily influence the overall quality of what you're dealing with so always keep that in mind and I'm working on a very like I said before a very tough item and with it being a weapon it'll take longer to make overall Shaper. My sheep. And 
once again, I am no engineering master at all. Uh, the only reason why I got as far as I have with this is because uh, I just mess with bones. So, uh, sorry if I happen to make a mistake or I forget one small thing, you know. Uh, there are a lot of people who are really good with um, this side of it who I think might uh, be able to answer some of the more in-detail questions. Uh, Anti-carp knife from my belt. If able, I do suggest you get a carving knife. It or, uh, <laughs> I do suggest you get a, a tool belt. Tool belts are actually always really nice to have. They keep things organized out of the way. And always make sure when you're going through, uh, like with this one, shape my longbow with my shaper. Always be sure to state that your item, if there happens to be an item on the table or nearby or someone else has it at their feet, sometimes you'll try to mess with what they have. And if you accidentally are able to step in and do something for them and damage it, it's not a good thing. Um, I've accidentally did that to somebody else's material one time, and I ended up paying a fairly heavy fine just to not get poked. So, let's tie Shaper to my belt. Um, tie my carbon knife. Oops. And we should almost be done here soon with bow. This is one of the items where you will need to assemble it with something else. Oh, awesome. So here we go with a rasp. So with the rasp, once again, this is where it gets very annoying if you're in a room full of people, especially if their name starts with the letter M. I don't know why this happens. But if you're in a room full of people and you go to tap your lumber or the stack of bones, you might end up tapping them on the, somebody else on the shoulder instead, no matter how you word it. And then this is where it gets very annoying and I've upset some people is the next command with the rasp is you need to rub the item with your rasp and you will rub their shoulders instead and I've made some people very upset over that too <laughs> so please be sure that when you're working with any engineering tools in general to be working in a room with either a limited amount of people or be watch very carefully what the actual outcome is because it is very easy to uh, mistake it for not working keep trying to enter the command in different ways and making people very uncomfortable. I don't know why this happens. It just does. I, I've tried uh, rubbing the material specifically by using mys and full na uh, full verbs and stuff like that. It just, it just doesn't work and I, I couldn't explain it as to why this happens. Uh, I need a carving knife. <clears throat> oh, here we go again with the rasp. So yeah, we should almost be done. I hope. Let's go ahead and check, actually. At any point in time, if you get lost or forget where you're at, you can analyze what you're working with. And it will tell you where you're at. Or give you an idea where you're at. As well as, of course, what you're working with what the quality is and how far you're, you are along if you have enough skill in the actual uh, craft you're working on. So right now I'm about two-thirds of the way done. 
So tie knife to my longbow. Oh, whoops. <laughs> That's my longbow, my belt. And then we need to get our rasp again. Rub. Having a really bad day typing. To my belt. Tie carving knife. And this is just what you're gonna be doing with the actual bow itself. Over and over and over again. Uh, sometimes you might have to pull out something extra like the clamps should happen near the end and you're going to want to be using those on some of your uh, wooden creations as well. Uh, tie to my belt, untie uh, shape, shape along with my shape. Here we go, actually speak of the devil, clamps. tie shaper to my belt and then we're going to want to get clamps which is not on my belt it's actually in my bags so get clamps and then you're going to want to push your item with your clamps Now just like with the bellows and blacksmithing, this doesn't have an actual item count, it's infinite use, but it does wear down over time. So if you have a pair of these, just make sure they're in good condition, because even something like this in the later ends of what you're crafting can heavily influence your quality. Still left, still left. Okay, so we need another shaper again. And we've actually reached the end, just about. Now, this is where you can't go any further without buying the proper uh, additional items, unlike some of the other uh, crafts, like with uh, making weapons. Um, there are some weapons out there you can actually carve the poles and stuff to use in the assembly phase. This, you're going to need a bowstring. So, putting my shaper away. Uh, where's the Oops. Oh, so here's the mistake I made. <laughs> uh, the lumber at your feet, which I told you don't forget about, I forgot about. So, so now we're back in the society building, and to the east one, where you can get your uh, lumber and everything else, this is actually where you get your bowstrings, however you cannot buy it out of this window. If you look inside the crate that's on the ground, you'll see your strings, strips, poles, cords and uh, bone backers and lenses. These are each used as the assembly parts for everything else. So we want to buy string. There we go. And then we want to assemble my string with my longbow. And the nice thing is there's no round time with this, but you are going to need your, uh, what's it called? stain. So you're going to get your stain and then apply my stain to my longbow. Uh, one second, I'll be right back.
Okay, sorry, sorry. Alright, so after you add the stain to your bow, once you attach the string, we'll go ahead and analyze the longbow. And we're done. Very simple, very straightforward, and a little bit more lengthy than I kind of prefer to kind of delve into, honestly. I do prefer my alchemy over anything else. But engineering, in general, can be a pretty good craft, especially shaping. Uh, you know, it, if you want to make yourself a really, really nice table so that we can actually do some proper alchemy work and not a hobby like engineering, I guess it'll do you pretty good. Uh, unlike blacksmithing, you uh, won't be able to train, or no, even with blacksmithing, you won't be able to repair a lot of this creation you can make through shaping. You'll need stuff like sandpaper for the repairs, and you're going to be using the uh, stain as well. If you choose to repair your bows, if I remember correctly, you want to rub your wooden item with the sandpaper, putting it away, and then applying the stain to the wood as well, and you'll be going back and forth on this, if I recall correctly. Actually, let me see if, uh, let me see if I can do that myself. Uh, sandpaper order 15. So if you want to order, just order twice, and they'll hand it to you if you have the money. And let's try this. Ah, okay, my bow is in good condition, so it won't work, but let's try. All right, actually, it did need some repairs. So, you'll notice the extremely long round time. I don't have the techniques to push into shortening it down like I do my blacksmith thing because I don't really repair my own uh, weapons or anything. If you want to lower that down further, like I said, the art tech you can hop into, but a lot of people prefer to be using the forestry tech to help increase the rare wood findings, uh, chances of getting more out of uh, per chop and or consistently finding better quality overall. So, stow sand, get stain, apply stain to short, oh, shower, <laughs> short bow, and there we go. So you'll just bounce back and forth between the sandpaper and the stain until it'll say, uh, it doesn't warrant repair or isn't damaged enough to warrant repair like it would with the actual metal work. And then once you're done, uh, if you have work orders that do require it, make sure you have your logbook and then press it into the logbook itself and you'll be good to go. If you just want to hold on to it for a period of time, you can deed it by buying a deed packet from the blacksmithing area and then pushing the bow with the deed packet to create a deed. But keep in mind, it does count as two items in your bag, so it does kind of hammer your uh, item count overall. But for heavier materials, like uh, what I carry around, oops. Like if I had to carry around all this on hand, it would be horrible. Uh, it would count as actually as 140 items inside my bag, and with the inside the register itself, it'll count as just the the 
book, and I think it counts as two items overall because it's counted as a stacker. But at least this, you can keep a fair amount on hand and then bulk turn them in for later, especially if you're after pre uh, prestige, and then you'll be pretty good. But if you do have like an item inside your your uh, your register you want to get, but you want to get the there's very specific quality to hand over to somebody, but you have like uh, 50 long bows inside, you can turn reg to page to the dedicated page and then read. And just like when you read the deed itself outside of the book, you'll get all the information on its quality, if it does have volume, volume, and then the other uh, stats with it. So actually, uh, put reg in my pack. Oops, my pack. In pack it. Oh, I do got a pack it. Okay, now I'm short. Actually. Did. Where did I put it? Did I drop it? I dropped it. Damn, okay, so we'll just do it this way. So push short with my packet. So. And there we go. It'll show all the stats on the bow. And anything else you might need to know for what it is in case you, like I said, you keep multiples on you. I know some people like to deed everything they get their hands on just to be able to keep it um, on hand and out of the way, especially when it comes to weapons or uh, heavy metals. But other than that, if uh, you guys have any questions or comments, yeah, you can always either find me in game or in Discord. Uh, I am in the Crafting Society channel as well, but like I said, I'm not really that great with shaping. I just wanted to go over the generic kind of like the 101 information uh, of how to actually get started. There are far better people out there who would be perfect for the more strict questions like wood qualities, durabilities, and stuff like that. But I just wanted to make sure people who were getting off the ground, you know, where to get your tools, how to use them, uh, what the verbiage is to be able to push them on through and uh, some of the nuances with what's being made. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope this answered some of your questions. Um, I really hope I didn't miss anything. If I did get something wrong, feel free to call me out on it because I, would, I don't like giving out bad information. I want to make sure uh, everybody has all the tools and knowledge on hand to be the best crafter out there. So if, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you want tools made, unfortunately, you can, or not unfortunately, unfortunately, you can also go to the Crafting Society Discord channel as well and have uh, someone in there make it, but costs are always up to the person. And with that, I'll leave it to you guys. Have a fun and happy holidays, and I hope your crafting goes well.